we all want to catch more bass, right? Of course. Of course we do. We all do. I do. Everybody does. So I'm sitting here in my office and I wanted to talk to everybody out there a little bit more about the mentality and the how to go about catching more bass. So I want to take a step back from getting too technical here. A lot of times we end up going like past the point of basics to the extreme like little teeny minute details of um you know catching how to catch fish off a of bed or you know what do you what does it take to trigger a strike when you're deep cranking now i i do i love all that stuff but i love the basic stuff too because sometimes even professional bass anglers go way past the basics and they go to the little minute details and they get hung up on it and and so just let's just take a step back Let's take one step back. First, we want to think about the bass. Now, there's seasonal patterns. Of course, we know the bass, you know, typically in a place that has seasons, it, it, they're going to winter in a little bit deeper, more protected areas. Then they're going to come up on the shallower flats to spawn in the spring. And then in the summertime, they're going to go, for the most part, either back into the thickest cover, which is grass, if there's that on the lake, or they're going to go back out to like deeper structure, brush piles, stumps, points, things like that. I mean, th those are kind of the basics. A lot of people, we've covered all that kind of stuff. But let's get more into the, the, the like things, the basic parts of fishing and trying to catch those fish that you may not have, have thought about before. Now, so here we go. Now stay with me. Um, when you're fishing for bass, there's basically three different uh, levels that you're going to be fishing for. Either you're going to fish for bass on the top, you're going to fish for bass in the middle of the water column, or you're going to fish for bass on the bottom, if that makes any sense. And there are times when you're going to get 10 times more bites when you're fishing for those fish in the middle of the water column. Now, baits that we use you know, for each one, Top water is pretty obvious. Buzz baits, pop bars, zero spooks, things like that. That's going to be top water. That's pretty obvious. Things in the middle of the water column. Now we're talking about uh, possibly neko rigs, wacky worms, jerk baits, things that stay as swim baits. They stay in the middle part of the water column. They don't get on the bottom and they don't get on the top. They stay in the middle part of the water column. Then we have baits that get on the bottom. Now, we, I think it's obvious, you know, they're shaky heads, Carolina rigs, you know, for the most part, Texas rigs. So, so if you're not going through all of those, now, if we're talking about 40 degrees in the wintertime, probably not going to be throwing a lot of top water. Uh, you may, when it gets into the 50s, you may, especially upper 50s, you may be starting to fish top water. Um, but once they, once you know top water's in play, now you got to go to all three levels. So that's just one one of the basic things that even I miss from time to time. You know, I'll, I'll get out there and I'm really zeroed in on on a drop shot, and man, the fish just really aren't aren't on it very well. the The drop shot is like a mix between fish on the bottom and a fish off the bottom. It, it's it's a little bit of a mix, but it's more on the bottom than than not. Um, and so, so think about that top, middle, bottom scenario as you as you go about your bass fishing, and and you're trying to select lures and try to find lures that the fish are biting that particular day. There may be days where they just kill it on top water, uh, and you can't hardly get a bite in the middle of the water column, and vice versa. There may be days where you can't even get a bite on top water, and then you switch to like a let's say a zoom fluke which is something just under the water, you know, just in the middle of the water column, and man, you can't keep them off. Uh, so it's just, uh, and you're throwing in the same places. So you just have to keep that in mind, top, middle, bottom, top, middle, bottom, top, middle, bottom. Am I fishing top, middle, and bottom? Am I trying different things? Uh, but then there's one other aspect about top, middle, bottom that I want to I wanna bring to your attention. And this is one that uh, I don't hear a lot of people talking about. There, there's almost like two classifications of lures for, for me. One is lures that draw fish to them. 
they have drawing power. They draw fish to the lures. And then there's, then there's lures that go to where the fish are and kind of get into their territory, if you will. Now, there, there's, there's some that are kind of a hybrid in between the two, but for the most part, most lures are, can be categorized in one or the other. Either those lures are drawing fish to them to eat them, or they're going to the fish. Now, let me give you an example of both. Uh, now, a bait that draws fish to them, zero spook, topwater, definitely. Yeah, you're throwing that, that thing on topwater. The fish are not sitting on the top of the water, uh, but you might throw it near them, and they're sitting by a stump, and, I'll, and you throw that topwater bait, and they're going to run up, run six or eight, ten feet or more, and blast that topwater bait. So they're, they're, that's a drawing bait. Your, you know, your bait is drawing them to the lure. Then you have baits that are going to the fish. So that fat fish is sitting by that stump, and you pitch, let's say, a drop shot over by that stump. That drop shot's going to go down, and then it's going to come right by that. And it's, I mean, it's going to go right in front of his nose. That bass is going to have that bait right in front of his nose. He's got to make a decision. Am I going to eat it, get it out of my face, or am I going to just look the other way? Or am I just going to let it go by? They, they, it's in their face. They have to make a decision right then and there. That's a, that's a bait that goes to the fish. Now, you know, you've got, you know, chatter baits, spinner baits, crank baits. They're kind of a hybrid between the two. Because if that bass is sitting by that stump and you throw the spinner bait over there and that spinner bait bumps the stump, it's right in his face. And that's really, you went to the fish and you, you, you tried something that was a trigger to get that fish to bite. Boom, it hit the stump or you, you fluttered your spinner bait right in front of that fish's face. You put that spinner bait in that fish's face. Now you can also take a spinner bait and cover a flat, you know, and burn it up close to the surface. And there might be a fish by a stump and he'll come out 15, 20 feet, run and, and just smash that spinner bait because he's, you know, that's, he sees it. He wants to go get it and eat it. There's, you know, so a spinnerbait, crankbait uh, can kind of go both ways. Jerkbait, for the most part, is a drawing bait. Swim baits, for the most part, are drawing baits. They're drawing baits to them. So as we get back to top, middle, bottom, you want to make sure that in that, especially middle and bottom range, you're using both types of, you're using baits that draw fish to them, and you're using baits that go in to where the fish live. You, you know, you come up to that lay down, so to speak. You come up to that lay down, and let's say you throw a zero spook off the end of it, or a jerk bait out off the end of it. You're gonna you're trying to pull those fish out of that lay down to come out and eat your bait. Let's say you throw a cast or two and you don't get a bite. You might pick up a, a D bomb and pitch it right into that lay down. Pitch it right into that lay down, you lift up, uh oh, he's on it. You put that bait right in front of that fish's face and you kind of didn't give him an option. He, he either had to eat it or not eat it right then. Boom, right then. So as you're, as you're looking at lure selection and going out there on the water from a basic, basic standpoint and you're not sure where the fish are, kind of what they're going to be doing, uh, you want to make sure that you're fishing top, middle, and bottom, giving them some different different options in, in all those depth ranges until you figure out kind of where they are. You start getting bit in the middle, you may want to experiment with more baits in the middle of the water column um, or those baits that are going to the fish versus the, the baits that are drawing those, those fish out. So keep that in mind as you're going out there to get started in bass fishing, trying to catch some fish. Keep that in mind. I think that'll help you catch a lot more fish. If you have any other basic tips like that, drop them down there. I'm looking to learn. I'm looking for like little, uh, you know, sound bites that can help me and can help everybody else uh, catch more fish. So drop them down there in the comments. If you have any other uh, input on this topic, I'd be uh, I'd be curious to hear it. And hopefully everybody else can can learn something from it too. So thanks for watching.